The F-16 is a new addition to our inventory of fighter aircraft. It is a multi-role tactical fighter with full air-to-air -air and air-to-ground combat capabilities. One difference between the F-16 and other fighter aircraft in our inventory is that the F-16 has an electronic flight control system. Instead of mechanical linkage between the pilot and the flight control services, flight control actuators receive signals through a fly-by-wire system. This system reduces aircraft weight and allows for greater combat maneuverability at high speeds. The aircraft is powered by one turbofan engine which supplies thrust and power for all aircraft systems. If the F-16 should experience engine failure, electrical failure, or hydraulic failure, an emergency power unit, or EPU, is automatically activated to supply emergency hydraulic and electrical power for the flight control system. This allows the pilot to maintain control of the aircraft. The fuel used to power the EPU is referred to as H-70, a mixture of hydrazine and water. Hydrazine is a toxic chemical and it has the potential to be hazardous. But it's not the only toxic chemical used by Air Force people. These chemicals can be used safely with appropriate procedures and training. Hydrazine is not something new. It's been used in military missile propulsion systems and it's had many uses in commercial industry for years. In many Air Force Titan missile maintenance operations, full protective clothing is required. In the routine maintenance of the F-16 EPU, system design permits maintenance personnel to work with a minimum of personal protective equipment. However, in unusual situations or an emergency situation, personnel must have complete personal protection as well as a fundamental understanding of the hazards of hydrazine exposure. What are the hydrazine dangers? If you're unprotected and exposed to high concentrations of hydrazine vapor for short periods, you may experience dizziness and nausea. Liquid contact may cause skin burns or eye damage. In very high concentrations, you might become unconscious. If you're unprotected and exposed to concentrations of hydrazine above the permissible exposure limit over an extended period, damage could occur to your kidneys and liver. Also, high exposures to hydrazine have been shown to cause cancer in mice. However, despite the long history of hydrazine use in industry, there are no studies which link cancer in humans to hydrazine exposure. The H-70 fuel is a mixture of 70% hydrazine and 30% water. Under normal conditions, hydrazine looks like water. It is a clear, oily liquid. It has an ammonia-like odor, but you can't use the distinctive smell of hydrazine as a warning of danger. At concentrations detectable by odor, hydrazine is more than 20 times above the permissible exposure limit. In other words, if you can smell it, you need medical attention. If you should see a suspicious puddle in, under, or near an F-16 that looks like water, don't touch it. The thing to do is contact job control, which will in turn contact qualified personnel. What is a safe exposure to hydrazine? In the Air Force, we use occupational safety and health standards, referred to as AFARSH standards, to specify the minimum acceptable occupational health programs. In the AFARSH standard for hydrazine, a permissible exposure limit, PEL, is established, which ensures that our workers should not suffer any harmful effects. These standards are based on the most current scientific information. When new information becomes available, the PEL is reviewed and changed if necessary. If you ever have occasion to work around an F-16, you should know where the EPU and the H-70 fuel tank are located. Both are located in the upper fuselage, just above and forward of the right wing. Personnel who routinely maintain and service the EPU system might be exposed to certain dangers under some circumstances. This is particularly true when loosening connections, purging lines during removal and replacement of the EPU fuel tank, and during fuel tank servicing. During routine maintenance and servicing of the EPU system, 
small pieces of polypropylene felt or clean, wet, white cotton cloth should be placed under any area where a couple of drops of H70 can be spilled. The polypropylene felt is preferred because it is very absorbent. When the EPU has fired, it will be necessary to remove the fuel tank from the aircraft. It will be serviced in a special servicing facility. If H70 should come into direct contact with your skin or clothing, remove the clothing and immediately flush the affected area with large amounts of water for a minimum of 15 minutes. Time is very important. The quicker you flush the hydrazine, the better. If your eyes are exposed to either H70 vapors or fluid, immediately wash them with water for at least 15 minutes. Then get medical attention. We've mentioned small spills or leaks, but when a major spill occurs, it takes the coordination of many specialists to implement procedures that would ensure the spill is contained and neutralized in a safe manner. Since hydrazine exposure in this situation is clearly possible, full personal protective equipment is required for those in the immediate danger area. Unit 51, what is your 1020? Support personnel should include security police, fire personnel, medical personnel, and fuel system specialists. Hydrazine is not new. Because of a large body of industrial experience in and out of the Air Force, we know its hazards and how to protect against the dangers. Each individual must protect himself by following the requirement of the hydrazine AFOSH standard and the applicable tech order. A lot of research and field evaluation has gone into the development of our safety procedures. All this effort was geared toward your personal safety. Take advantage of it. <laughs>